Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the Spirit of God that is upon each and every one of us. We believe for the anointing to flow through me, to minister to each and every one of us, God. Even those that are watching online, we thank you for your knowledge, your wisdom, your love, your grace to be manifested in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to follow along, you can go to rmfchurch.org, click on media, then notes. And today's title is Be Bold. Be bold. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. This is a message translation. It says, trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God and run from evil. Boldness. I believe there's many areas of our life that we need to be bold in. Uh, because I know that if you are bold about something, you know that God's going to come through for you. Uh, and there can be no boldness if there's no confidence. If you don't have confidence in God, you're not going to be uh, walking around with boldness. Uh, knowledge is going to help you to have confidence. But uh, if we would ask you in certain areas of your life, are you bold as a lion? What would your answer be? Do you not have any fear in your life? Or do you have fear in your life? How about in your belief system? How about in your faith, your job? And you need to ask yourself from time to time, what does boldly living look like to you? What does that look like to you? To have bold faith, you know, you're going to have to have great trust. There are things that rob us of our boldness. There are things that rob us of our boldness. The first one, and I believe one of the biggest ones, is condemnation. Being condemned. And there's words that are attached to condemnation. Being guilty or feeling guilty. Or that, you know, the blame is on you. Shame. Disapproval. Fearful because of your guilt. Because, you know, when people feel guilty or condemned, the reason people do is because they know that judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. So Romans chapter 8 Verse 1 through 4, this is a Passion Translation. It says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the Anointed One. That is you and me. Did you hear that? The case is closed. The case is closed against us for any of us to have any accusation coming against us. How many think that's good news? Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life flowing through the anointing of Jesus has liberated us from the law of sin and death. You know, there's people, uh, you know, I've bumped heads with some people, you know, because they, I have preached grace and people who are want to lift up the law. And uh, I don't try my best not to argue with people, but I, I've got a folder in my office, probably about 50 scriptures uh, about the law and about grace. One person said, well, you know, you just don't know that much about it. And, and I bit my tongue because I, could, I thought I can bury you with scriptures, but, which that's not a good thing to do. You're, the word is not for burying people unless you're at a funeral. But anyway... Uh, I digress. Verse 3, for God achieved what the law was not unable to accomplish. Did you hear that? The law couldn't accomplish things in our life, but Jesus did accomplish it. Because the law was limited by the weakness of yours and my human nature. Yet God sent His Son in human form to identify with human weakness, clothed with humanity, God's Son gave His body to be the sin offering so that God could once and for all condemn the guilt and the power of sin. Remember that phrase. Jesus came to condemn the guilt and the power of sin. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the Anointed One living His life in us. 
and we are free to live, not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. You know, I, it just seems like Christians especially, uh, they think it's humility by walking around and confessing and talking like, you know, well, I'm just so unworthy. I'm just really unworthy. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And what you need to say is you were a sinner, but you were saved by grace, but you are no longer a sinner. You say, well, pastor, I sin. But just because you do something doesn't mean that's what you are. I'm going to say it again. Just because you do something, that doesn't mean that's what you are. Amen? Amen? So you need to get that in your foundation. Because people, they, they're, it's rampant through the church. Not this church, but I mean, when I was growing up, you know, we're just so unworthy. We're just like a worm. So what did Jesus, his redemption do for you and me? Made us better worms? Cleaned the worms up? Is that what it is? No. He has made us worthy. So, and I know a lot of people want to hear sermons on sin all the time. And they want us to sing songs about how unworthy we are. But um, I don't think so. I don't want to take the blood of Jesus and drag it through the, blood, through the mud. You know what I mean? John 3.16 says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now listen to verse 17. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Jesus did not come to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. The Passion Translation says, God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its savior and to rescue it. Woo! Boldness. I think it lacks in our, all of our lives, and from time to time we may be bolder more than what we should be. But boldness is a really, uh, it really is an important thing. And so that's why I want to just talk about it today, preach about it, teach about it, and so that it will just stir up on the inside of you. Proverbs 28, let me back up. I was going to say that, to remember that, and, uh, about condemnation. God judged a thing that was judging you, according to Romans. God judged the thing that was judging you and God condemned the thing that was condemning you. Sin. It's called sin. It's called the law. God judged it and God condemned it. And in other words, and he took care of it. He took care of it. Proverbs 28.1 The wicked flee when no one pursues. Why? Because they're just fearful people. Fearful people... Uh, are like that. They flee when no one pursues. But the righteous are bold as a lion. People who don't know they're righteous have little peace or little joy in their life and they don't act boldly on the word of God. People get miracles by being bold. I'm going to say it again. People get miracles by being bold. It's not the timid that get miracles. It's people who have uh, just a tenacity on the inside of them that I'm not leaving, I am not moving until I get what I came for. You know, and it's throughout the Bible. Stretch forth your hand and you'll be healed. The woman with the issue of blood, she pressed to, which was illegal for uh, a woman like that to be out in public. But she was out, not just in public, but in a crowd. And the crowd was so thick that she probably had to get on her hands and knees to press through the crowd to receive her miracle by touching the hem of, of Jesus' garment. That's boldness. To think that, you know what, if I'm found out, I could be stoned. I remember, you've heard me tell this story, but we have some new people in our church. When I was about 19 years old, I was in the Air Force, and so I came home on leave. And my family had planned this 
a real nice picnic at Bernheim Forest outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Real beautiful park. And so we all went there, and there's big hills there. And so me and some of the, my friends, younger friends of mine, we uh, climbed this real steep hill. And it was so steep, you couldn't walk. You had to grab hold of the tree trunk that was growing, you know, limbs and stuff to pull yourself up to get to the top. That's how steep it was. You got the picture? Pretty steep. So after we got up there, somebody came running to the base and said, hey, it's time for lunch. You all need to come on down. So everybody started going down, you know, walking off to the side and to find the trail that leads down the hill, but not Mike. The FedEx that was in me, the quickest distance between two points is a straight line. So I thought, I'm just going to go down the way that I came up. Not realizing how steep it was because, you know, I just... It's funny how you can be so forgetful in seconds when you're 19 years old. <laughs> so I started going down. And, you know, and you, so after a while, you're, you're like cooking pretty good. I mean, you're flying. But then, all of a sudden, you know, your feet are no longer just, they're just in touch with the earth, but they're not, there's no, nothing going on there at all. And you know, when you hear wind blowing through, whistling through your ears, you know you're going way too fast. So by the time I got to the bottom, I mean, I was doing like Mach 1, if you want to talk Air Force terms, but anyway, I was going way too fast. And that wasn't the bad part, which that is bad. But there was a right at the foot, there was a root that came up out of the ground and it went right back down in the ground. So it just made a horseshoe. And lo and behold, my foot went right into that just like a stirrup on a saddle. But my body kept going. And so it jammed in there and I just went, boom! I mean, it was bad. Everybody came running because they just thought he's dead and... Um, didn't have to just throw dirt over me because I made an indention in the earth. But uh, when they got me out and carried me, my brother-in-law actually carried me to the picnic table. And uh, he said, are you all right? And I said, no. Well, what's wrong? I said, everything. I couldn't tell what, what hurt the worst. You know, like, I mean, from my head down, everything hurt. Every, I didn't know that was possible. But it's possible for everything in your body, every muscle, every part of your body to be in pain at one time. But eventually when the pain subsided throughout the rest of the body, that foot, it, my brother-in-law looked at it and he says, Mike, I think you broke your foot. And I had a tennis shoe and it just, it swelled up inside the tennis shoe. They couldn't yet, he had to cut my shoelaces off to get my foot tennis shoe off and so um, we went home after that and um, I was just really fired up this is the time I that uh, I just really got a hold of God when I was in the Air Force man I mean I just really was hungry for him got a hold of him and so we were in my brother-in-law's house and everybody else went home and uh, he said let's just pray for your foot and he got oil the Bible says in, in James, the, the call for the elders of the church and let them anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith, a save or heal. And so he prayed. Everybody got around and prayed for my foot. And uh, I said, help me up. I couldn't even get up. So I, he helped me up. And I said, I want you to walk in his house. The, the kitchen went through the dining room and then in through the living room and then you can make a circle. There was a wall there with an entry over there and an entry over there so you could just make a circle. So I said, I want you to walk with me. And so I hobbled on a broken foot and just kept walking and kept walking and kept walking. I don't know how many times I walked, but eventually I just got bold. And I said, I'm the healed of the Lord. And I let go of his shoulder, and I took off running. Somebody said, well, did it hurt? Absolutely. When you walk on a broken foot, it hurts. But this is what happened. Somewhere along that path, maybe about the 10th or 11th or 12th time, I felt no pain. I absolutely felt no pain. 
And I mean, I start crying, tears coming down, because I knew God touched me and I was healed by the power of God. The whole, and the point is, the point is this. If I was not bold and to respond to what I believe, what Jesus had did for me, I would have went and had to get a cast and everything else. And this is what happens. You know, the devil didn't let go of that. That was... Uh, the very next day, I had to go back to the base, and uh, which is a three-and-a-half-hour drive up in northern Indiana. And so when I was getting dressed to go back to the base and packed up and everything, I mean, I had a constant voice in the back of my head saying, you are not going to be able to put your flight boots on to go fly. And that, because I was going back, to, I had a flight. You are not going to be able to put your flight boots on. You can put tennis shoes on, but you can't put flight boots on. You know, because your flight boots are up like that, and they're skinny, and, you know, you have to put your foot down like that and really slide it in. You got the picture? <laughs> so I was just kept coming to me and kept coming to me. Man, you're not going to be able to put your boots on. You're not going to be able to put your boots on. You're not going to be able to put your boots on. You're going to... What are you going to do? You're going to have to tell your pilot you can't go flying. You can't do that. You can't go barefoot on the plane. So I was on I-65, leaving Louisville, Kentucky, going to Indiana, I-65. And I remember it was irritating me so much that I pulled over into the emergency room. I don't suggest for people to do this on a interstate where people are doing 65, 75, 80 miles an hour. So I pulled over all the way to the side. I got out of the car, and I ran down the emergency lane for about 100 yards and then turned around and ran back as hard and fast as I could. And I got in, and I said, I just want you to know, devil, I'm healed. And you know what? I, that voice just went totally away. Went totally away. And the, this is what I'm saying. Being bold, being bold, it, it, it causes you to step into a realm that where you believe there's going to be an expectation. And uh, I never had that problem again. Never had a voice again to anything. I'm just saying, you talk about shutting it up. You know, when you run down an interstate, uh, knowing that, uh, just to let everybody know including myself, I'm healed. I am the healed of the Lord. We have a great example of boldness, what righteous people should do, and that is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus. How he responded to things, what he said to things, what he said to people. Being bold in your faith. In Proverbs 28, it says to be bold as a lion. When we were in Africa, we went on... Uh, a few safaris from time to time. And this one safari I remember going on. And uh, you're in an open uh, Jeep type vehicle. You know, there's nothing on top of it or anything. And uh, I went one to safari with Paul. And uh, I think this was a different one than, than we went on. But I was riding on the side. And there we were just riding down this. It was like a path. It wasn't a road. It was a path. And... On the path was this huge lion just laying there. You know, I just thought, do we have guns or something? One of those electric pokers? I mean, surely there's something in here. And, and the, the young lady sitting up there, I started asking questions right away. Like, What's going to keep that lion from just jumping in here and eating all of us? And this is her response. Oh, you know, the lion doesn't see you as an individual. He sees the whole uh, thing as one unit, and so he, he won't uh, bother us. I was three feet from that lion. Three feet. I remember just, and I, I, I just looked out of the corner of my eye because I did not want to make any sudden move or anything, you know what I mean? So I'm just, the lion's laying down there, and it just looked, you know. 
And I'm going by there, and I'm telling you what, I don't know what my heart rate was, but it's probably the fastest it's ever been. And I've jumped out of planes, and I've done all kinds of crazy things, jumped off cliffs, but man, that made my heart race. And then years later, I just thought, who interviewed the lion to, make, to see if that's really what he thought? I'm glad I didn't think that then, but I mean, do they interview lions? I mean... Come on now, they think, oh, the lion thinks this, and I got, and I just believed it. I went, oh, yeah, that makes sense. And I'm, then later I thought, are you kidding me? If I would have thought this now, I'd go, no, nobody speaks, do you speak lion? <laughs> Come on now. I mean, what did, this is a 20 question questionnaire here, fill this out. You let us know what you're thinking. And I got suckered into that, man. Anyway, we all made it. But the point is this. This is the thing about a lion. It was not intimidated by that vehicle and all the people in it. If somebody got out, you know how you can do certain animals, cats or dogs, and jump out and go, ah! you know, how they just, you know, do anything. You would, if anybody would have done that, they would have been lunch. They wouldn't have just, you know, jerked and took off running. Lions don't run from anything. They don't even run from elephants. They don't, they're the king of the jungle. For, and that's what they're called for a reason. And this is what God used for an example for you and me. That we, the righteous, are what? As bold as a lion. Lions aren't fearful of anything. Neither should you or I be fearful of anything. A doctor's report. A financial report, we're not afraid of that. You should not have any fear. But if you have the mentality, listen to me, of being unworthy. Oh, Lord, I'm just so unworthy, everything. It will cause fear to creep inside of you. Why? Because it's the righteous that are as bold as a lion, not the unworthy. I said it's the righteous that are as bold as a lion. And so naturally, the, the devil creeps inside the church and he tries to get us all to, to live in fear and tries to get us all to say we're unworthy, to try us all to say, oh, I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not worthy of this. Of course, none of us are. That's why Jesus came to make us righteous, to make us worthy. So this is important for you and I to always remember. If you're going to be bold, you have to know that you're righteous. Number one, number one thing is you have to know that you're righteous. And that you're made that. And it causes you to be able to be bold. I'm telling you, righteous people aren't afraid. And so if you have fear coming in, you need to re go over some scriptures that says that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Hebrews 4.16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You got to come boldly to the throne of grace. The Passion Translation says this. So now we come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover. You come there also to discover something. What are you discovering? The grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. This is why Paul said, I'm going to boast in my time of weakness. Why? Because he knew that, man, I may not be able to do it in my own flesh and my own intellect and my own ability. But if I come to the throne of grace, I'm going to receive something that I could not attain any other way. Amen. The grace of God. The grace of God. So, when you go to the throne of grace, you're coming to Him for something to be manifested that you can't do out in and of yourself. And that we must now think of God as the God of grace. And that we must come boldly and confidently that we are going to receive something. You're going to receive something. You know, people think, well, I hope he hears me. I don't know if God hears me at all. Are you reading Hebrews 4.16? It says you come boldly. God's there. 
It's up to you. What's your mentality when you go and talk to God? God, you know, I'm here. Just want you to know I'm here. Don't strike me dead with a lightning bolt. I'm, I know it's been a long time. You come, you know, people think that's being meek. No, it's just the wrong attitude. And you probably won't receive anything at all. Not because he's withholding it, but it's because of your attitude of unworthiness. We think it's great in church to sing songs in church. You know, I'm so unworthy. Oh, we can't do it. But, you know, thank God someday, you know, we'll get to heaven. And, you know, I don't, I know that God doesn't throw up, but. If he ever did, that would be it. I don't know if that's ever been said in a pulpit, but anyway. This is an arrogance. It's not arrogance. And that's what a lot of religious people think it is. Oh, you're just being arrogant. No, I'm being scriptural. And this is the way God wants you and me to respond. If you're on this planet, man, you gotta, you got to have some tenacity. you got to put your big boy pants on and say, hey, we're going to do this. We are going to do this. What is God offering for those who come to God through Jesus? What is He offering to us? He's offering mercy and He's offering grace. Mercy to set us free from sin and grace to strengthen us, to set us on our feet for our own lives, for the service and witness and for whatever we're supposed to do on this planet. You've got grace to do it. There's so many people begging. Listen to me. As of today, you're not going to beg God for anything. Do not beg God. Oh, God, just please, just please. I remember, you know, when, when I was a real younger teenager, I did something terrible or bad. I go, oh, God, please forgive me, please. And I did it and did it and kept doing it and kept begging, kept begging, you know, just to make sure, you know, in case you didn't hear me the other 42 times. I want to make sure. That's the wrong attitude. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace. You come boldly as if you belong there. Woo! I said as if you belong there. You know, I'm here, God. I just want you to know I'm coming boldly before you in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you have created a way for me to receive healing. I thank you that your word says that by your stripes I'm healed. I thank you that all of my needs are met, not going to be met. They are met right here today, right now. I believe every need is met. Every bill is going to be paid. And I come boldly to say thank you for doing it for Mike. I think that just puts a smile on God's face. Instead of going... Because people are coming up there going... You know, oh, God, please help me, you know, do something with these bills. And, you know, please do this, God. And, you know, I know I've done, I've been living right. And I know everything. You know, if you could really hear God and clean out your spiritual ears, you would hear, stop it. Just stop it. I'm being bold today. Is that all right? Boldness isn't based upon what I can do. But it's based upon what Jesus has done. That's why we have boldness. Did you hear me? If you think that, oh, I can do this by myself, well, then that is arrogance. But we are bold because based upon what Jesus has done for us, he got boldness for you and me. Jesus, he got it. He got boldness for you and me. Boldness gives you the ability to do something you've tried many times before but failed. How about that? That's good. Well, I've failed so many times, so I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to try it. You know, I've, I've tried to believe for healing, but I've failed 400 times, so I'm not going to try this. I, I've tried doing this for a, a starting a new business, but I'm not going to try this in a new business because, you know, I've failed so many times. You know, I, I've talked to millionaires before. I know one personally. And there's been so many of those guys that have failed and failed and failed, and they dust the the dirt off of themselves and say, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it. And guess what happens? They do it. They do it. There's so many people that, you know, they failed and so they're not bold enough 
to say, okay, I'm going to do it again. But if you come to the throne of grace boldly, you're going to receive something that will cause you to say, I can do this. Boldness rises up within you. It will, and it'll say that. I can do this. And other people may say, yeah, but you know what? You tried that, and you failed like four times. This is the fifth time. This is the fifth time. People are discouraged. And they feel defeated. But the boldness of God would cause them to rise up and do what they could not do. And they know. They know. I can't do this on my own. Man, the boldness of God to come upon you. You know, you read about David's mighty men. I mean, that is just crazy. He's got a little bean patch and the enemy's coming to take all of his beans and everything. You know, and everybody takes off running. But this one guy... It's one guy. Everybody leaves. And he stands there. He pulls out his sword. And he says, this is my bean patch. You ain't getting my bean patch. Yeah, but there's a whole army coming. There's a whole army coming. Yep. And I'm going to beat every one of them. And I'm going to defeat every one of them. And the dude did. He did. David's mighty men were bold guys. And guess where those bold guys came from? The cave of Adullam. You remember the story of the cave of Adullam? They were distressed in debt and discontented, moaners and complainers, and just terrible citizens, people. They were just sick pups. But David was their leader. David was the type of leader that would face a giant and says, You're mine today because of my God. I've defeated a lion, I've defeated a bear, and you're an uncircumcised, or in other words, you're an uncovenant person. I'm a covenant person, so you don't have a choice. You don't have a chance. You do not have a chance against me and my God because I'm in covenant with God. What happened? Boom! It was a done deal. It just went to PG-13. He chopped his head off, man. I mean, he chopped the dude's head off. He didn't even have a sword. And he used the guy that was coming against him, his own weapon against him. That's bold. Anyway, David's mighty men came out of that depressed state and rose up to a place of, I'm going to fight the whole army. Wow. I'm telling you, that's strong. That is strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's what righteous people can do. You can stand against the enemy that is remarkably, I mean, the odds are against you. There's no chance for you to win. It's impossible, matter of fact, for you to win. There's just something that God likes when people say that's impossible. Or that can't be done. Or businesses, good jobs are hard to find in Pueblo. It's hard to make a great living. It's hard to become wealthy in Pueblo. I've heard people say that. Now, if you want to go to Denver or Springs, you can make money, but not so much in Pueblo. I mean, that just makes God just... Up. I think he's rubbing his hands and going, let's do this. Let's do this. You've got to get bold in your job. You've got to get bold in your finances. Are you hearing me? I mean, when you spend $100, don't think that, you know what, that's the last one that came off the printing press. Of course, now they make them by the tree, and so that's definitely not true. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway. People who don't talk boldness, they're going to speak such negativity. The people who are bold and know they're righteous, they will speak to the problem. Have you ever spoke to a problem? You speak to the problem. Jesus spoke to the wind. Are you hearing me? Jesus spoke to a fig tree. Jesus spoke to a fever. Peter's mother-in-law spoke to a fever and it left. He spoke to the blind. He spoke to the lame. He spoke to people and they were... He spoke to a dead man. You think a dead man can hear it? Lazarus! Come forth. Been dead four days. You can't just say, Lazarus, you know, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but, you know, everybody's crying out here. And 
I'm crying. I miss you, buddy. I really do. I just, I'm just hoping God. Just like, no. He'd still be stinking, man. He didn't have that kind of attitude. What did he say? Roll away the stone. Everybody else goes, hey, oh, wait a minute now. <laughs> he stinketh after four days. He's gonna, it's going to be bad. We don't, and we don't, it's just going to be bad. He said, roll the stone away. And then he shouted. Man, that is so bold. You know, most people think, what if it doesn't work? I mean, it's going to be embarrassing. The stone's away, you know. Okay, roll it back. Quick, quick, roll it back, roll it back, roll it back. You can think all these things, but somebody who knows they're righteous and they know they've heard from God. If you know you're righteous and you know you heard from God, it's time to speak. It's time to be bold. If you're going to see people raised from the dead, if you're going to see the blind to see, cause them to see, if you're going to have deaf ears open, if you're going to have lame to walk, if you're going to have things happen miraculously, they will not be done by people who are timid. By people who just, well, I hope this works. Oh, I hope this works. I hope, you know, I've been believing for a, a, a promotion. I just hope I get promoted. No. No. Be bold about it. Be bold. I just really sensed this this morning, right? I was standing there, back there talking to Jay. We got to be bold in, about our job. We got to be bold about our finances. If you can live paycheck to paycheck... You will. If you can live on the poverty mentality side, you will. You know, if you can live with the pain, you will. You know, God, I just need you to heal my heart issue. You know, I've got a bad knee, but I can live with that. That's fine. I mean, I can live with that. Just, but this heart thing, I, I, you really got to do something about that. And guess what? You'll live with that messed up knee. It's time to be bold and say, I'm not living with any pain. Melody and I were going on a little hike with uh, one of our grandsons. And uh, we were having a little picnic on this hike, you know, and walking on something. And, and I, it came up, you know, that uh, he was rubbing his head. And, and uh, Grammy asked him, he said, well, what's wrong? He says, well, I have a headache, you know, I just have a headache. And I just stopped and I said, no, you don't have to live with, with a headache. We're going to enjoy this hike. I want you to enjoy this time, not like... Are we going to go home now or whatever? I said, we're going to enjoy this. So I said, we're going to take authority over this right now. You've got to be bold like that. You've got to just say, oh, it's, it's just a headache. Okay, I'm sorry, buddy. You know, that's all. No, no there's a time to be compassion, but I mean, right, that's sympathy. Compassion, there's a difference between sympathy and compassion. Sympathy is just, oh, I'm so sorry. That is so terrible. Compassion says, oh, I'm sorry. Let's do something about it. Jesus had compassion on people. He didn't just say, oh, man, ooh, that's bad. Oh, all of you all are hungry? Oh, I'm sorry. Walmart is closed. No, he said, he told his disciples, he says, let's feed them. And they looked at him and said, say what? Let's, let's feed them. Jesus, there's, there's over 5,000 people here. And we don't even have a lunch. He says, we can feed them. He says, what do you have? Well, this little boy over here has a lunch. A little boy has a lunch. You know, I know what his mother packed for him, but I guarantee you she didn't have in the back of her mind, like, hey, this will feed 5,000. <laughs> oh, it was a little boy's lunch. And Jesus said, give me the little boy's lunch. This is boldness. This is boldness. He says, there, and he lifts it up, and he says, Father... I thank you for blessing this food because we're about ready to feed 5,000 people with this little boy's lunch. Woo! He blessed it. He told the disciples, start breaking out and start giving it out. And they did. And they kept coming back and it kept going. Kept going. Kept going. And that would have been awesome if it was just enough. But there was 12 baskets. Wasn't it 12? 12? 12 baskets left over. Woo! You know what that is? God is exceedingly abundantly more than enough. No matter what your issue is, there's going to be, if you're looking to God, there's going to be more than enough. Pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Woo! Everybody say, that's my God. People think that they will be more righteous 
when they die and go to heaven. Or things are going to be a lot better when they go to heaven for their life. Have you stopped and thought about that? You know what we're saying when we have that kind of mentality? Listen to me. You're saying that the blood of Jesus is not as powerful as your death. You're saying that your death is more powerful than the blood of Jesus and what he did at the cross in the resurrection. Ow! Everybody just about thinks that way. You know, oh, when I die, oh, praise God, it's going to be much better. So your death is more powerful than his death and resurrection. Whoa! That's a slap you upside the head, though. (laughs) That's what we say in Kentucky. Oh, what's that mean? You needed that. That's what that means. We all need to be slapped upside the head with the truth. That has set you free. So don't think, you know, well, when I die, you know, healing's going to be available. Finance is going to be available. Joy's going to be available. Everything's going to be available. Yeah. Did you know the Bible says death is an enemy? And you're making it sound like it's your best friend. Death is an enemy. Jesus conquered death, hell, and the grave. He conquered that. And you're trying to go back that way? Come on. I said, you're trying to get victory out of that? He says, oh, victory, where, oh, grave, where is your victory? You're trying to get victory out of your death. When Jesus said, no, you get victory out of my death. You get victory out of my death, not out of your death. Give it, get it out of my... That's why I died and was raised, is to give you victory. I didn't need the victory, but you did need it, and I did it for you. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Are you weary, carrying a heavy burden? Then come to me, and I will refresh your life, for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. Did you hear that? God is what? Easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me for all that I require of you will be pleasant and easy to bear. So if your life is miserable and unbearable, you're missing it, honey. Jesus is the antidote for anything that's weighing you down, causing you stress, causing you anxiety, anger, pain in any way. Jesus is the antidote for that. Amen? And the great thing is we are Jesus' representatives. How are you representing him? How are you representing him? Acts 4.13 says this, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John... And perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. They marveled. And they realized they had been with Jesus. So you can say, well, you know, I just don't have the education. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't even know if I have faith. I don't have this and I don't have that. Well, all you need is to be with Jesus. It caused the government. It caused the government to look upon these two and go, whoa. These guys are special. They're uneducated. How can they do what they do? They're uneducated. How can they do what they do? They're untrained. How can they do what they do? And they figured it out. They've been with Jesus. They have been with Jesus. If you drop down to verse 29, Acts 4, 29. Now the Lord, look on their threats. This is when the disciples were beat up and locked up and everything. And they were let loose. Now Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. How are you going to speak your word? By stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all... It was right off the coast of L.A. They were... Went right over your head. Anyway... The place was shaken like an earthquake, like what happens in California. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they all spoke the word of God with, with what? I wonder if they saw any miracles because they were speaking 
the word of God with boldness. Yeah, they did. I said, yeah, they did. So, how do we pray? You pray with boldness. How do you speak to sickness? You speak with boldness. How do you speak to lack? You speak with boldness. How do you speak with problems? We need to change our attitude and start speaking with boldness. Don't sit there and start crying, going, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just. You can start there, but you need to correct that immediately. I know a lot of times if something tragedy happens or whatever, yeah, you, you may start there, but honey, slap yourself up. Grab yourself by the bootstraps and say, we're going to be bold. You want, you want the outcome to be different? Then you got to get bold. I said, do you want the outcome to be different? Then you got to get bold. You got to get bold about it. They just fired me. I don't have a job. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, they just fired me. You know what? Praise God. You know what? I'm going to believe that I'm going to have a greater income than I've ever had before in my life. That is just bold. People go, what? Yeah, I believe that I am going to have the greatest income that I have ever had because God is my provider. My steps are ordered by Him. He knew that I was going to lose this job. Therefore, I know when this door closed, He's going to open up a bigger door for me. Have a great, bold attitude when it comes to your job, when it comes to your finances, when it comes to things happening in your life, your children, you know, your children. Oh, did you hear what Johnny's doing this and Mary's doing this? You say, "Woo! God's going to turn that situation so around. Whoa, look what a great testimony my children are going to be. My children are taught of the Lord. Amen. The devil's going to, you know, Brother Hagin said this. He said this. He said, I'm sure the devil wished he never would have given me that disease, that, uh, that disease, blood disease that just put him flat on his back. Because he believed, Mark eleven twenty three, 23, and it came alive to him. And he started speaking to his body, speaking to that sickness. And not only did it change his world and his family, he built a school and it changed a whole generation and that to come. And somebody says, I bet you the devil wishes he never even gave him a cold. Can we say that about ourselves? When the devil comes knocking on your door and you answer, the, the devil goes, oh, wrong, wrong residence. I'm sorry. That's the way it should be. Let's stand. I went over. I did what Melody said. So if y'all want to stand up here and talk for about 10 minutes, that would make me even look better. If you want to just don't go and pick up your kids yet, just hang around and talk for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then she go down there and she'll, I will get a feather in my cap on the way home. Are you bold today? I said, are you bold today? Let's be bold in our life. Every part of our life. Think bold about yourself. Think bold about your God. Think bold about the word. Think bold about your health. Don't think that, you know what, man, I'm getting older, man, my, my health is going down. No, 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 be like Caleb. Turn 80 years old, I want this mountain. Well, Caleb, there's the enemy still on that mountain. Yeah, I know that. Well, that means you're going to have to fight him and defeat him. Yeah, I know that. I want this mountain. They said, it's yours. Age 80, he took a mountain and he took it. Why? There was something inside that boy called boldness. Woo! That's all it takes. There's something inside of you and me today. It's called boldness. Don't push it down. Don't throw wet blankets over it. Uncover that and say, yeah, it's in there. And I'm going to let it out. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. That Jesus, he literally purchased boldness for us by him coming as a human. He came as a human and he defeated all of these areas that we're talking about in his human form. When he lacked tax money, it was provided boldly. It was provided for him. Speaking to the, the winds and speaking to fever, speaking to sickness, speaking to situations, speaking to a fig tree. Lord, he spoke to things and, and he did that as a man. The boldness of God was upon him. So that's our example. 
May we rise up and be the bold people that you want us to be. I pray that for everyone that hears this in Jesus' name, that boldness would arise within them. They'll be like the mighty men of David to take on the enemy without any fear whatsoever in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.